you, Karen, for that wonderful introduction to your organization, which sounds totally terrific. And uh, thank you, Jeff, for saying all those things, you know, but reminding me of my long biography, which uh, is, is accurate, actually. <laughs> Karen and I have this uh, actually uh, word in common. We discussed the etymology of it last night. It comes from Ted Berrigan. New York, New York poet uh, via Rhode Island and Oklahoma. <laughs> and a contagious speaker. I met Ted when I was 19 years old in New York City and uh, I didn't speak a whole lot of English, so hearing a guy talk and talk with great authority and saying things like, actually, <laughs> and terrific, made a huge impression on me. <laughs> Yeah, you know, poor vocabulary and psyche. Well, actually, my psyche was rich. My vocabulary was poor. Um, my publisher is here, Gabriel Levinson of Anti Book Club, and he published Biblio Death, uh, my life with uh, my archives with life in footnotes, which is my last book and sort of the, a book that kind of returns me to this idea of being a kid because I feel like I can write anything I want to because I'm not doing it for any financial, pecuniary reason. Or I'm not teaching anymore. I don't have um, you know any kind of sense of uh, anyone watching. So I say things and then I think about what I said. <laughs> Very few people have the luxury of doing it. All the time. And then when I think about what I just said, then I think about my best have said this other thing because maybe it's not like what I just said. And so in writing this book, I wrote a main text about one of the big central questions of our time, which is what happens to the book when it uh, becomes uh, an, an, uh, pixels on the internet. And what does that mean, actually? And so that's, there is an essay about that. But then while I was writing it, I was also thinking about how I started writing it and how my life as a writer went. And uh, I, those thoughts became footnotes. And so I was writing two books at the same time. I was writing a memoir in footnotes. And then I was, you know, uh, speculating, you know, mildly, in a mildly intelligent manner on what had happened to this business of mine, to this, really, this activity that I, I, I practice. So, Biblia Death is an interesting book, and um, I love it, and I love it, and I know I love it, because I didn't get bored reading the proofs nine times. <laughs> so, Gabriel made notes, and he sent me back the, the corrections. I kept reading it with some degree of uh, interest. And amazing. <laughs> you know, this is great. It's like reading, you know. A great book by somebody else, which, which is one of the few books I didn't try to be somebody else. Um, I, have, I sort of discovered this business of main text and footnotes in, in a prior book called uh, About a Thousand and One Nights. It's called Whatever Gets You Through the Night. A story of Shahrazad and the Arabian Entertainment. A title, by the way, which belongs to Richard Burton, one of the great translators of the night. And not to myself, as some, you know, people were quick to point out, because I, Arabian entertainment sounds slightly, totally incorrect, but that's what Burton called it, and since he is a great character in, in the book, uh, I, I followed him, and he also taught me about footnotes, because this book, his translation of The Thousand and One Nights was published by subscription, it was a private publication, nobody would touch it because of what they conceived as vulgarity and too much sex, or both. <laughs> and uh, it was not published in its entirety until 1940. 
46 by Heritage Editions and Burton took the liberty because he was free to do whatever he wanted to in this book to, to elaborate in his footnotes on his own experiences as an Arabist and an adventurer and uh, you know, con a really a great linguist. And so that book, you know, in addition to being a great translation into English and a great story of Burton's adventures, was a license to feel free to do that. So I discovered that there and now I'm addicted to the idea that you can actually do something and think something else and get that in too if you write a film. <laughs> so I thought what I would do tonight actually, besides talking about the book, because it's, uh, it's, uh, it's prose, you know, there's probably nothing deadlier to read than prose. <laughs> um, although, you know, uh, is, you know, this is the book. But also at the same time I had this book uh, of poems, of selected poems, which uh, is called So Recently Rent a World. Um, my publisher had difficulty with it. Other people did too because of the word rent. And they all said, well, why don't you call it So Recently a Rent World? I said, well, that's not what it is, because the word rent means also torn and, and ripped in, in English. And so the meaning was distinctly, I mean, the phrase is a little stilted, but the, the word meant distinctly torn, as well as rent. I.e., in 1965, my apartment in New York was $60. <laughs> And it's now 5,000. So. But yes, recently it was a rent world, but it was also a world that was torn. And it was torn by great things, by all kinds of events. It was torn for me by the fall of the communism, by the tearing of the Iron Curtain in Romania, which I covered for NPR and ABC News. It was torn by the, the, the sort of uh, change and uh, sudden spectacular uh, transformation of the book because of the internet, by the change of our entire world because of the internet, about the, the, all kinds of new ideas that actually tore a lot of what we thought about many things. And so it is so recently a rant of the world. And the rant of the world. So I was going to read a few poems and then uh, we'll have a conversation. So these... Um, 